Hello, welcome or welcome back to Heretic Owl Tarot. My name is Liz and I will be guiding you on this journey today. This is a reading for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, definitely a rising. <laughs> but wherever Capricorn shows up for you, um, or not, honestly, I mean, these readings really are, I, you know, I 100% believe there's a message for whoever needs to hear it in whatever reading. So if you were even called to any other reading that has nothing really to do with you, I suggest that you also watch that. Anyway, off track. So before we do get into the reading, though, I want to give a shout out to Bob Thomas. He's no longer in this physical plane with us. He actually suddenly passed away last month and he was a Capricorn and such an overall cool guy. He was a dad, a grandpa, lover of music, lover of human rights also, which is always amazing. Um, it's so supportive. I mean, you, if you are a Capricorn, if you've been around my Capricorn readings before, I mean, he usually comments on them. Um, here and also like Instagram and stuff. He bought a few things from my Etsy store, like just, you know, overall very supportive guy and will definitely be missed. And, you know, like I said, I just, I want to give a shout out to him wherever he is. <laughs> um, fighting the powers that be from the other side, no doubt. So, um, maybe he'll come through in this reading and, um, you know, have cool messages for you. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But let's get you an oracle card. And then, of course, we'll get your tarot out. And see where we go. Ooh, what a beautiful card. That didn't really take that long at all either. Beyond the mind, the heart beats. How beautiful is that? And how busy, too. There's this galaxy back here. There's, you know, even just this, this DNA or what is that called? The double helix? There is so much going on in this card. Gosh, you know, like I just, it, it like has this feeling of There's this big <laughs> feeling of the like being free and like being able to spread yourself out. You know, Pluto was in Capricorn for the last 15, 16, what was it? Since like 2008. So not quite, not 20 years, but what was that then? Because it just moved out of Capricorn. Was that this year, 2024, like at the beginning of this year? It'll dip back into Capricorn, like the later degrees of Capricorn at the end of this year. And then it'll move into Aquarius for like for sure <laughs> for the next 20 years. But um, anyway, it's just like like wherever Capricorn falls for you, right? Like no doubt that area of your life has felt transformed and, you know, sometimes transformation to it can feel not necessarily restricting, but constricting. Is that the word where it's just like kind of <laughs> squeezing in a sense? But that's it's like that's how change happens sometimes is by constricting something to make it into another thing but anyway like this just has this feeling of like maybe your your dna changed in some capacity even just recognizing and obviously not necessarily literally it can be you know there are things that that can change our dna but it's almost even like stepping into your own destiny and then we have this this hermit crab here there's this bird's nest with some eggs in it 
I think these are like bubbles. I don't, can, let me see if, can you see that clearly? I mean, look how much stuff is just like going on in here. And then there's this person who it's like they're generating all of this energy. It's just literally because there is so much energy in you or you even have the capacity to even house this kind of energy and no fucking doubt, excuse me, no doubt a Capricorn would be able to house this amount of energy because it's like, it's knowing how to work with it. And in order to do that, you have to remain grounded. Otherwise, you're just going to get swept up by all of that. And I feel like a Capricorn would no doubt be able to proverbially or metaphoric, whatever, <laughs> um, keep their feet on the ground while all this shit, <laughs> all this energy is just, and, and they're creating the energy though. And it's almost, again, like it's this feeling that there's literally no planets in Capricorn right now. For the first time since 2008, there are no planets in Capricorn. So there's nothing that is influencing. Unless, I mean, of course, like you, you could have planets in Capricorn, duh, right? Like... <laughs> If you're here, hello, but there's nothing transiting Capricorn. How many cards is this? This is exactly six cards, <laughs> right? One, two, three, four, five. This is exactly six cards, <laughs> which is exact. Oh my gosh. Capricorn. All right. All right, I'm here for the ride. I'm a Taurus. I can remain grounded, you know? <laughs> Amazing. We have the Six of Pentacles, the World, the Hermit, Wheel of Fortune, Page of Wands, Eight of Cups, and we have the effing Six of Wands at the bottom of the deck. Five of Pentacles, Eight of Swords, Ten of Swords, the Moon. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't have to get more water. So let me just, <laughs> I'm a cancer rising. So let me get my water. <laughs> um, I have coffee here, but coffee is not, coffee isn't going to do it for, for us in this reading. I need water. So let me get water. Let me make sure Everything is in frame here, and then we're we're gonna read about this card. We're gonna get into it, okay? <laughs> okay, cheers. <laughs> All right, so whoops, interesting. So when I picked up the little booklet, this card came or kind of just like fell off the top of the deck. Release the dark wound, let love live. Hmm. maybe an additional little message. And I love too how like the, the similarities between these two where you can see the skeleton like in her cheek and then in these hands and even the fish. So I think that's cool. Um, all right, let's see what this card is talking about. Okay. In the chaos of modern life and the constant fluctuations of our minds, it can be difficult to remember that a sublime, sublime sanctuary lies within, yet it is always there. Beneath the ceaseless activity, there is an endless, vast spaciousness that restores and connects us to something greater, something that exists outside of time. Some might call it eternity. Within that sanctuary, sacred sound is felt rather than heard. The sacred sound is actually the reverberating heartbeat of the entire universe. Your own heart's rhythm sounds within the greater universal heartbeat. The totality of life, all 
of your being can be felt as one through listening to or feeling for the sacred sound of the heart beating within you. It is through this heartbeat that we experience a love that is more than pre preference or attachment. I don't know why I'm having such a hard time reading this. <laughs> what is going on? Okay. Um, I feel like a, a kid reading in front of the class for some reason. I don't, you know, I, I mean, I always feel that way when I read these. But anyway, um, this is the love that inspires, energizes, and moves us to create even beyond what we once thought was possible. Your love for life, the need to feel alive and express yourself, and the quest for that which is truly fulfilling. These are the sacred urges that rebel against fear and promote passion for being alive. They flow through your blood and can be felt through the beating of your heart. This oracle has a message for you. There is a way of the mind which can make mountains out of molehills even when it thinks it is turning mountains into molehills. Then there is the way of the heart. It is subterranean and moves subtly beneath possible obstacles, intelligently shifting with exquisite sensitivity, sensing the way forward through dangerous pathways and responding to what is before it, even and responding to what is before it, even what? <laughs> I am so confused. <laughs> It is subterranean and moves subtly beneath possible obstacles, intelligently shifting with exquisite sensitivity, sensing the way forward through dangerous pathways and responding to what is before it even occurs in the physical world. Okay. However, with the heart's intelligence, we cannot see and know in the same way that we do when we allow the mind to direct us. We have to be open to another way if we want the, to benefit from the innate intelligence of the heart. The mind sees plans and strategies. The heart feels, responds, senses, and intuits. When we walk the path of the heart, we must feel and respond rather than plan our way. Deep within, you know what to do and you know what is true. It matters not whether the mind and its plans seem to agree with your inner sense. Your willingness to trust your heart and to rebel against fear will serve you well. Let your heart lead you. Be sure of your faith and trust in what you feel. Very interesting. <laughs> Very interesting indeed. Thank you for sticking with me on that. I don't know why. Pardon me, like when I was... Um, feeling really insecure in those moments of reading out loud, I was literally thinking in my head, I'm like, I probably didn't even really need to read the Oracle message. And that might be why I was just stumbling over it. But I don't know, I like reading <laughs> the messages. Because again, I mean, like, no doubt, there's a message in there for you, you know, like, and um, I think it also just honors the author. I just I like to You know what is also even so interesting is that like this reading even feels different than the other readings I've done so far. You know, I mean, like the book was talking about following your heart versus letting your mind get in the way. And I do feel like I literally just did that. And then I was like explaining to you or like trying to justify why I just did that. So... <laughs> I'm not a Capricorn. I don't have anything in Capricorn. I mean, my descendant is Capricorn because I'm a Cancer rising. But anyway, that's also what I mean. There's a message for everybody in every mess, every reading that I do, um, including myself, who's who's the one that's like you know translating the message to you. But I feel like I just got judo chopped or something like. <laughs> Because in no other reading that I've done so far, did I even just start going into a dialogue about the Oracle card like I did with this one when it came out. And then, you know, my mind, because I am a little OCD-ish, <laughs> um, you know, my mind was like, well, this is how we've been doing the other readings. So this is the way that we're going to do this one, too. 
And then I was just like, I, like I said, you know, I was like confused for a second. I'm like, what did I even just say? So anyway, I'm, I'm saying all of this out loud to you so that maybe there's something even in your own life or even in the next four weeks is what I just heard. Um, you recognize within yourself, like where you are sticking to what you normally do or sticking to a, a routine or, you know, I'm not saying like, you know, completely disregard every routine that you have. No, but it's more about listen to or pay attention, have an awareness of if you are doing certain things because of your mind or like the book said, if you're doing things because of, of your heart and you're being led by your heart. So <laughs> let's finally get into your tarot. So we start with the Six of Pentacles. Pentacles are Earth. It's our time. Where are we putting our time? Where are we physically showing up in our lives? It's also our physical body and our health. Anything that we place value or worth on, like our possessions, ourselves even. And the Six of Pentacles is this give or take, give and take, Thing. <laughs> so what you put out you are getting back this also speaks to charity I mean you know we see these two figures here right and one person has enough that they are giving to another person so this is reaching a point where you are secure here and you have this feeling of wanting to give back or be of service in some capacity. Now, you could be either one of those characters on the card. You could be the one receiving. You could be the one giving. You could be one and the other all within like days of each other, right? Within the same year, within the same month, within, you know, I mean, truly within even the same day because again you know the energy is constantly in motion and like with the six of pentacles i don't really see there being strings attached to that so again that's kind of where the charity aspect comes in because there's not generally i mean you know there's not generally strings attached to that i mean it could even be like volunteer work um it could be giving your time to someone to help them mentor them again it could be somebody else who is giving freely right like their time to you to help you in some capacity but there is an energy exchange in some capacity, like regardless of who you are in that card, you are getting something from whatever it is. I mean, it could even be a grant, a scholarship. You know, I mean, there could be money coming into you that you needed or were manifesting even. Or again, you could be donating money to a cause that you believe in or just getting involved in some capacity. I mean, maybe even doing volunteer work for them. But in doing so, like you would also be receiving some, whether it's experience, networking, connections, Right. I mean, like there's something where you, the the energy is equal either way. So then we have the Wheel of Fortune, which is uh, Jupiter, which is <laughs> Sagittarius or Pisces. And the Wheel of Fortune, I don't you know, wherever the Wheel of Fortune shows up, I feel like it's a good card. It's like your luck is changing. The wheel is turning. So there's some aspect of your life that is going to be in motion in some capacity. I mean, like we can see in this card, 
they're holding this plant that is growing even you know this spiral aspect and we have it looks like a, a galaxy of course too but it there's a spiral aspect which to me spirals are evolution so there's some type of um, upgrade that's going on here and with the wheel of fortune jupiter speaks of expansion creation reaching your goals good fortune obviously too i always give the example of as far as the way that things can change right like for me in 2021 i believe was that yeah i was laid off from my my corporate job and um for the rest of that year that was at like the end of march in 2021 and for the rest of that year i feel, I feel like i literally slept <laughs> i was so burnt out and frustrated and the so yeah i mean like for the rest of that year i feel like i slept i didn't really do a ton i had no idea what i wanted to even do and I was trying not to worry about it, blah, blah, blah. And so it was like one of those things where I had an abundance of time. I mean, at that time, I had nothing but <laughs> time. And I, I used to just get kind of nervous about that, right? Like, you know, and even a little guilty because I think having an abundance of time is a luxury or, you know what I mean? Like, not a lot of people have an abundance of time. <laughs> so anyway, I was, you know, just kind of feeling guilty about it. But like, I kept getting this feeling of, you know, rest now because it's going to be a while before you're in this space where there's ample time or abundance of time in order to rest. Like my mission <laughs> was to rest. And sure enough, by 2022, there is no rest. And I mean, I do take rest when I when I want it, right? But like, I, there's no longer nothing to do. There's no longer, uh, you know, anything like that. It's like like I have to like even kind of schedule that in, which I'm grateful for. But it changed, right? Like the wheel changed. It was. At one point I had an abundance of time, the wheel of fortune, like the wheel changed and so did my life and so did my time and whatever I was doing with it, right? So again, that it can literally be anything like the way that life is right now, <laughs> in some capacity, it doesn't have to be this huge major thing, but there's something that the way that it looks now is not the way that it's going to look here and I, I know I heard four weeks, but um, in the next little while. And then we have the world card next. <laughs> so again, even just this kind of double-ish kind of like confirmation about something ending. Because the world card is the true end of a cycle. It's the end of the fool's journey, but it's... It's just the the signifier of, like I said, the, the way that things have been. There's some aspect of that that's coming to an end, and it has to in order for this new, whatever it is, this, this new way of, of being this new, um, you know, thing, whatever the Page of Wands is, and we'll talk about that obviously next, but... Um, something does have to end in order for the new thing to begin and you know even in in this card right we have this this infant this baby that looks like it's in your utero right i mean it, it looks like it's it's being incubated in some capacity there's this figure eight around it this the the snake that's eating its own tail there's this person seemingly a, an adult person by the looks of it looking through this keyhole type of Thing. So it's it's like there's an aspect of you 
as adult you, because I'm assuming most of us are adults, right, in some capacity, but there, there is this version of you that is ready to be birthed, but it's also, it's like a new version in some aspect, right, just the imagery of an infant, there's, it's something new, it's something pure even, right, because, you know, babies are born blank slate, right? So there's something ready to be born. I always get this with this specific world card, you know that, um, was it Macy's commercial where they're standing at the door and they're open, 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 right? But it's like just waiting. It's like watching water boil or something, right? Like it's like waiting for something to happen. It's like waiting for, for this thing to whatever this thing is for you. <laughs> Not that I'm calling a baby a thing, but you know, I mean, it's, it's just the, the symbology of it. Like whatever that is for you, it is time as Rafiki says. <laughs> and then we have the page of wands. And this is something new also. So wands have to do with its fire. So it has to do with the actions that we take. It's the motivation behind the actions that we take, creativity, passion. How are you communicating those things? What actions are you taking towards those things? I literally just heard a fire under your ass. <laughs> it's like building that fire. I also see wands as being information because that's generally what we get by trying things. We figure out what works, what doesn't work, what do we like, what don't we like. And that all just becomes information. It's life lessons and stuff, right? So the page of wands, they already have all these sticks, right? I mean, they're, they're working on building the fire. So they've already take an action towards finding the proper materials to build this fire because pages are like the the newbies or like I call them the apprentices because you know so they they have the energy of the suit so in this thing they have the motivation they they are now starting to take action towards trying things right so there's this adventurous quality to it there's even a playful quality to it it's not taking things too seriously in the sense of not like allowing those things to gauge your level of success because then it, it becomes like a pass fail type of thing and no <laughs> You know, like I said, it's information. If you don't like something that you're trying, okay, now I know I don't really like that. Or, you know, you can make little pivots, little tweaks into what it is that you're doing. This is the time where you do it when you're in that page of wands energy, because then, you know, eventually getting to the king of wands, which I know we don't have on the table but once you do get to the king of wands that's where you all of these things that you tried all of the the um even the fun that you had the things that weren't so fun <laughs> like it all becomes what what makes you a master what makes you an authority a leader in the subject but you have to start from somewhere and that's this page of wands. And what's interesting, and I only know this because obviously, you know, I know this deck. <laughs> but the fire, the fire hasn't even been started yet. And when we get to the knight of wands, the knight of wands is holding the flame in his hands. So again, this feels like groundwork. 
you know, like it feels like preparation. It feels like, and especially sp like speaking to Capricorn, right? It's like building that solid foundation in order to house a literal flame. <laughs> like, yeah. So then we have the Hermit card. The Hermit is Virgo. I keep thinking about this world card and like fixed signs. Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. I don't know why it was even important to say that. But anyway, the Hermit is a card of Vir Virgo. This talks about healing, like inner healing. Literally, you know, like going within yourself, getting quiet enough to hear your own guidance. Also, the hermit, it's like the lone wolf in the sense that we all have a path that is unique to us. And the hermit is the one that makes a decision to step on that path. They are guided by their own North Star, their own fate almost or destiny. It's like, you know, but again, you have to even recognize that within yourself which is why you know there's this aspect of getting quiet meditating journaling you know it's like really tapping into your heart center even and getting clear on what that is they're also they're holding this snake here that could be kundalini in the, the almost kind of literal <laughs> sense, like just, you know, as far as on the spiritual path goes. But when I've been seeing this card come out with a snake, I, of course, even on the other literal side <laughs> of things, how snakes shed their skin. And I only know of two reasons why a... Um, a snake would shed their skin. I'm not even sure if one of the reasons is actually true for snakes, but um, the major reason is because they've outgrown it, right? And in order to grow, which is also evolution, right? But like in order to grow, they have to shed their skin. And if they don't, they'll literally suffocate in their own skin. So um, there's an aspect of you that is ready to grow and at some point you will shed the skin of you know and an, uh, an identity that you had a way of being especially with it being after the world card um, and especially too right there's even this snake um in the world card so i love that <laughs> kind of um similarity But then also the other reason I was thinking of, and, and I know it's it's true for at least spiders, um, and I only know that it's true for spiders because of Venoman 2.0 on TikTok, and he's always on his lives with, you know, like feeding his tarantulas, and he'll have sp um, snakes on there sometimes, but um, he had this one spider, this one tarantula that was in this enclosure, and she one of her fangs got stuck in one of the openings and it ripped off. Not on the live, thankfully, oh my gosh, like that would have been terrible to see. But he was saying that he just has to keep her alive because that's how they eat, right, with their fangs. So he, she's down one fang, so he was like, I just have to keep her alive until her next shed because she'll regenerate the fang. And sure as shit, she did. So <laughs> so again, there's the, the one one reason to shed a skin is to grow because you've literally outgrown your own effing skin. The second reason is to repair or regenerate something. Even, you know, speaking of this symbology with the infant, it's like to repair or regenerate, regrow, rebirth, you know, something, some aspect of yourself and that can be even, you know, like recognizing or building a flame 
under yourself. It's like motivating yourself in some capacity. It feels like getting your groove back. Mm, mm. And I love that for you. And then we have the Eight of Cups. <laughs> Leaving behind what is no longer serving you. I don't even want what's in this glass. It's not for me anyway. I'm, I'm leaving this whole... <laughs> this whole, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm walking away with the clothes that I have on my back. Um, you know, cups have to do with our emotions. You know, what is also so interesting is that the, the element that we're missing here is swords, which does have to do with our minds. So it's interesting that this, there's a lot of swords, well, there's a few swords behind the six of wands. We'll get into that a little bit, but it's interesting that this oracle card was talking about, you know, like staying kind of outside of your mind and getting into your heart. And the the aspect that's missing from this table almost to like reaffirm that is swords, which is our mind. So anyway, cups have to do with our emotion and our heart center. It's, you know, how are we feeling about our lives, about ourselves, about what we're doing, about where we are? Who we're spending time with it's our relationship to love how are we giving it how are we receiving it <laughs> what makes us feel good and what is not making us feel good so the eight of cups they're making this decision to like i said like leave behind what is no longer serving them they know that whatever is in that cup It's like, you know, like whatever Kool-Aid they've been drinking, they're, they, they've recognized in some capacity that that Kool-Aid <laughs> is no longer their flavor. And they're making this decision to walk away from that. And not only that, they're walking towards the nine of cups, which is wish fulfillment, having your desires met, feeling fulfilled. So, I mean, there, there is some aspect of your life that again, I mean, we even have this world card here too. So we have two cards that talk about, um, walking away or like ending something this is kind of that physical end of it. The cups thing is like the emotional end to it. So no longer putting emotional energy into a, into what is behind you, but looking more forward. This even paired with the hermit card is making the decision to step into your own power even more or like at all. And then we have the six of wands at the bottom of the deck, which is recognition, success, victory. Truly, you know, I mean, they, they just ended a performance and they're getting a standing ovation. People are throwing roses at them, right? So there is this, this aspect here that whatever this whole process is, there is success around it. So either you're going to be successful in whatever this this process is for you or even to like people are going to recognize that change in you you're going to be applauded in some aspect or um, acknowledged like you know people are gonna say wow you know I've really noticed a change in you we have the five of Pentacles eight of swords ten of swords and the moon the five of pentacles the five of pentacles speaks to lack or scarcity feeling left out in the cold feeling ostracized you might feel that it is an unfortunate part of growth because people around you have gotten so used to you being a certain way maybe like agreeable or quiet or you know like just not necessarily like pushing back on anything and 
this whole process is like you coming into your own identity, your own power. And that can no longer be a yes man or yes woman, or it can't really be like agreeable to somebody else's way of being if it goes against what you know to be true for yourself. So, you know, you might feel pushed out in some capacity, but I mean, like, you know, there's, there's this person here, like, regardless of which one of these people you are, there's three people on this card. Like there's still this level of support here. And also, you know, the fives are transitionary energy. So it's nothing to like pitch a tent and get stuck in. They're energies to move through. So whatever this ends up being, whatever that ends up being, whether it's like literal, you know, like some monetary aspect or again, you know, just feeling pushed out from a group or whatever, um, it is temporary and it's very much part of the growing process. We have the Eight of Swords. Like I said, swords have to do with our mind, our mindset, thoughts, ideas, beliefs. I also see swords as being the suit of ego because that's generally where we hear our ego is in our minds and our ego is created by the stories that we attach to circumstances, feelings. Whether those stories are ours or not and whether they're true or not. <laughs> but it does become... The reason why we do things, why we don't do things. So the Eight of Swords is like a self-inflicted mind prison is how I, oh, it, because it's feeling like you're trapped. But this person is not tightly bound. They, they're one decision away. Not even both of their eyes are covered. Like, but you know, it's, it's that victim mentality but they're literally one decision away from changing their circumstance, from changing their mind, from changing their belief. But also there's a lot of information to be found in the Eight of Swords because it's like, what are the things that are making us feel trapped? Are those beliefs mine? Are those stories mine? Are they true or not? Because swords also have to do, to do with divine truth. So there's a lot of information that can be found in the eight of swords speaking of we have this depiction of the ten of swords this deck has two depictions of the ten of swords and two depictions of the three of swords and this one speaks to wisdom tens are completion so there's this level of wisdom and not to mention two two different levels of wisdom because you know owls speak to wisdom and then of course just this depiction of an older person and just the, the wisdom that you get as you get older. And they're like staring each other in the eye. So it's like, you know, it's almost like this universal wisdom that, you know, there are things in the world or in life or, or just universal truths that you have discovered to be true. But then even just in your own life, through your own experiences, there are things that you know to be true amazing we have the moon card which is cancer and you know it's this thing of maybe what what you have always believed to be true is no longer what you actually believe to be true whether that's worldly or whether that's just about yourself because the moon card does speak to thing like unknown it's a subconscious too what what's living in there right <laughs> so there's like it's something there's something that is going to be or or is go you know like revealed to you i'm i'm going to leave it there thank you <laughs> so much for taking me on this ride with you, Capricorn, it was an honor to read your cards. I will talk to you soon. Bye.